Hello boys and girls, welcome back to Extreme IE. In this video, as you can see, we are exactly where we left off, where we have our, our, uh, our Apache container image up and running on this particular endpoint, or I should say particular workload, this particular server. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and remove that, so we'll, we'll get rid of it, that was just a test anyway, and we're gonna actually set up WordPress. Now the way that we're gonna set up WordPress is a little bit different. We're not just gonna go ahead and be lazy about it, we're gonna actually set up a WordPress image and we're gonna set up a separate container that is going to be our database environment. So we'll actually have two different containers that are running. This guy will be accepting inbound traffic on port 8080. Oops, that came out wrong. Um, and this guy is going to be accepting inbound traffic on port 3306. And, and so as we from the outside world come in, we're going to hit this container. That container is going to be using this MariaDB server as its backend database. And so let's go ahead and let's just jump in. Let's get started. Quick thing here. If you guys want to follow along, uh, let me get my mouse pointer here. If you guys want to follow along, you can actually head right over to Docker's website. It's hub, uh, hub.docker.com uh, forward slash MariaDB. And you can see that they've actually laid everything out for us. We're actually going to use this command here. Um, I've already copied and pasted it into Notepad and just changed the user and password that we're going to use. But we're essentially going to copy this exact command. Um, the same thing with WordPress. And so it just makes our life super, super easy to be able to download these images. Now, we are going to have to do some tweaking. We're going to have to set up a database. And so I'll show you guys how to actually attach to your container and, and be able to jump in and... Um, and mess with them. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to remove this container. Now there's a couple things here. When you stop a container, okay, so if I say docker stop, by the way, if you're if you're looking to figure out all the different commands and options that you that you have when dealing with docker, you can type docker uh, forward um, followed by a space, two dashes, and then help. If you hit enter, that'll go ahead and give you all of the different options that you have within your Docker environment. So I'm going to say Docker PS, which by the way, this is the same in the last video when I said Docker container list. Essentially, it's the same command. It gives us the same information. So the first thing that we need to do before we delete this container is we need to actually stop it. So we'll say Docker stop, and we're going to go ahead and type in that container ID. Now this is going to stop the container, and what you'll notice is that if I do Docker PS, it's no longer there. But that doesn't mean that the container is not still there, because if I say Docker start, and then say my Apache app, it will start up. Now if I say Docker PS, the image is still there. Okay, so I'm gonna say Docker stop, I'm gonna stop the container first. I'm gonna have to type in the ID. So we'll say stop the container. And then we're gonna say Docker RM for removing that particular ID because what we wanna do is we actually wanna remove that image. We don't want it, we don't want it there any longer. Okay, so now that image is gone. Now the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead on my notepad file and I'm gonna pop in this command here which is the command to download the MariaDB image. Now, the only thing again that I've changed from the default command that is in uh, or on Docker's website is the user. So I've changed it to user. I've given it a password for both the root password as well as the regular user. And I've gone and changed the name to MariaDB. You'll notice how um, when we look at the container images, you'll notice how you know the names are you know my Apache app or whatever. I just wanted it to be more consistent. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter and you'll notice that what my workload now begins to do, Docker reaches out, it goes ahead and it downloads that particular image. Okay, so we're just gonna give this a second to finish. It shouldn't take that long. So we're gonna say Docker PS, and now you see that we have an image, that's the MariaDB latest image. The name of this particular image is MariaDB, and this is our container ID. So whenever we go to attach to this container, this is what we're gonna use, okay? Now, before we get too ahead of ourselves and before we start doing uh, a lot of other tweaks, I'm gonna go ahead and download the WordPress image itself. Now, in the WordPress case, what I've done is I've specified the ports that I wanna use, and I've gone, uh, let's go ahead and hit enter, and we'll just go ahead and install it. Now, this is gonna take a minute or so, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the video and I'll come back as soon as this is finished. Okay, so it only took a couple seconds. Now let's go ahead and say Docker PS, or again, Docker container list. And now we have two images, two containers that are up and running. Now, how do I attach to these? Well, again, if you go to Docker and you type help, what, what you're gonna see is that we have an exec command. So let's scroll up here, exec. And this is the command that we would use to run in a, in a running container. So even though I now have MariaDB up and running, I need to actually create the databases required to 
run WordPress. And again, this is not meant to be a WordPress demo. If it, if it doesn't work or if we do something wrong where we set up the database wrong, it's not a MariaDB database, uh, database demo. Um, but let's go ahead and let's attach to this and let's see if we can get it up and running. So we're going to say Docker exec. And again, if you type help here, it's going to give you the different options that you can essentially have, right? Whether that's detaching a container, um, whether that's uh, connecting to it in interactive mode, which is what we want. We're actually going to use I and T. So we're going to say Docker exec and we're going to do minus I and T. Now we need to actually enter the ID, which of course we forgot. So we'll say Docker um, PS to get our ID. So we're going to say Docker exec uh, minus I and T. And now we're going to type in the ID. We want the MariaDB. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually type the word bash because this is what we want. We want access to uh, the bash of the container. And now we're in, right? There's a couple things that we want to do though, because before we actually get going with installing our databases and whatnot, we're going to need to install a few different tools. So let's go ahead and say apt uh, dash get, and we're going to say update. We want to update this container, um, update the container image itself. So we'll go ahead and do that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to say app get install, and we're going to say uh, vim nano because what we want is we want some tools, some editing tools, and we have to edit some files and whatnot. So we want to be able to have those in our container ready to go. And this is exactly like what you would do in a VM, right? You have your primary, you know, ESXi server, which is again, our container one, but right now we're connected directly to our container. Okay, so now what we'll do is we're gonna connect to MariaDB, it's already installed. See, this is what's really cool about containers is that we don't really need to do anything with the actual package or image itself. We've already downloaded the image with MariaDB on it. It's already running the latest version of MariaDB, so we don't need to really do anything. We don't need to do the install, we don't need to do anything, except essentially connect to MariaDB. I'm gonna use the password that I set up, and we're in, we're connected. So what I'm gonna do is say create database, and we'll call this guy WordPress. We'll keep it super simple. Um, and next thing we'll do is we're going to say grant all privileges. I always get this word wrong. I-L-E-G-S on. And we're going to do star dot star. By the way, I'm not explaining a lot of what I'm doing here because, again, it's not really meant to be a WordPress demo. Um, if you want to understand everything that I'm doing here, with, and I'm trying to talk to you at the same time. If you want to understand everything that I'm doing here with WordPress, then then yeah, that's, that's probably a different video that you want to watch. Essentially, though, what I'm doing is I'm setting up a database. I'm granting all privileges to uh, my user to that database. Then we're going to say flush, and because I hate spelling and I'm terrible at it, we're just going to copy and paste because I got it right once Why reinvent the wheel. And then we're done. Right, so I'm just gonna say control C and, and we're gonna jump out of here. Now we have our database created. I'm still connected to my container, right? Because I'm no longer on my, my root host, I'm connected to my container. The one thing that we need to do in MariaDB is we need to actually set it up for uh, remote connections. So again, this is a completely, has nothing to do with containers, but in order for you to actually see this working, we need to actually kind of take a detour here. Now, when you're actually setting up MariaDB, it's gonna install, I, I've seen this put, you know, files in different places. So what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, list Etsy. We're going to hit enter. Um, you'll notice that we have a MySQL file here. So we're going to say list Etsy and then MySQL. What we're looking for is we're actually going to be looking for a setup file. And the reason is because MySQL um, and MariaDB by default, they don't just bind their services to every address. You have to go and you have to actually tweak the configuration in order to do that. Okay. And it, it's a real pain. But unfortunately, this is just the case. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to list all of the different files that are in these directories to find where that configuration file is that essentially I have to uh, I have to edit. So I got that one wrong. There's a space there. Okay. So now this is the this is the file that I'm actually looking for. So if I type the cat command, and we'll go ahead and and like I said, guys, this is nothing to do with uh, with actual containers. This is just running bare bones Linux, but in order to actually show you the application up and running, you know, we have to actually configure the app, right? But again, keep in mind that everything we're doing is inside of a container right now. We are not connected to, and we're not making these changes on our root server. So this is the command we need to change, or this is the, the, uh, the entry we need to change. We need to essentially tell MariaDB to bind to every IP address and just allow open connections. So what we'll do is we'll hit the up arrow. We'll go back and we'll type nano because we want to edit this file. Now, now you can use any editor that you see fit, right? I don't, I don't really care. I, I like nano because it's super easy. Um, we say control X, we say yes, 
we hit enter, we're done. So now if we go back up and we look at this file, we've gone and edited this bind address to essentially all zeros. So at this point, everything that we really need done on our MariaDB server is finished with the exception of actually testing it, right? Which we'll do in a minute when we head over to our WordPress server. So we're gonna say exit, and now we're done. You can see that now we're actually back to our root server, right? So if I say again, Docker PS, I'm, I'm no longer connected to that single container. I'm back on the root host. Now, how do I know how to connect these two different servers together, right? And by the way, if I'm rushing through this, I apologize. I really want to try to keep these videos, you know, like 10 to 15 minutes and no longer. Um, how do I know what to connect to, right? In other words, I have these two containers. How are they going to communicate? Well, they're going to communicate through networking. So we'll say network list, Docker network list. By default, when we install Docker, um, it's going to set up a default, it's going to set up three default networks for us. Now we can go change those, we can add them, we can remove some, you know, we can do whatever we want. But actually when I first SSH'd into this box, I actually didn't, I forgot to point it out. You'll notice here that it actually lets us know that we have essentially two different networks running. We have our Ethernet zero, this is what actually connects us back into AWS. And then we have a virtual network here, a virtual gateway of Docker zero, and this is our subnet for Docker, 172.17.0.1, that's our gateway. So if I go, let me scroll all the way back down, by default, I believe everything runs in bridge mode, which essentially connects you back out to the outside world. So again, how do we know what to connect to? So we're gonna run the Docker inspect command, and we're gonna want our container ID. So for example, we're gonna connect to MariaDB. Now, if I just hit enter here, it's going to give me a lot of information, right? You can see a lot of information. Now, by default, when you hit enter, it's going to drop you all the way down to the bottom, and there's your IP address. It's kind of right there in front of you. A little trick, though, that I like to do is I like to hit the, the I don't even know what that's called, the, the bracket, I guess, um, and say grep, and then say IP address. Now, this part is case sensitive. If you're used to... Um, any of my Cisco videos, if you've watched any of my Cisco videos, if you've done any Cisco training at all, you know that this is kind of a trick where you'll say like, you know, um, show IP address or show IP uh, interface brief and then, you know, exclude unassigned or something like that. It's the same concept, right? Because Cisco's built on the same Linux command line structure. Anyway, I digress. Here's the IP address that we're going to want to connect to. So what we can do is we can go to our WordPress server. We can go ahead and log into that container we can install the MariaDB client, and then after we do that, what we can do is we can go in and we can test reachability between our WordPress uh, container and our database container. So let's say Docker exec, uh, again, minus IT. We're gonna drop in our, uh, our container ID, and we're gonna say uh, forward slash bin and forward slash bash. We want access to these. So we'll say enter. And again, now we're dropped into our container. And you can see by the by the, the prompt here how we've now dropped into our container. If I go ahead and list, these are all the WordPress files, again, that are automatically installed. I don't have to monkey around with downloading WordPress or install it. It's already there. So I'm going to say app get. We're going to say update. There's a few things that by default when you deploy these images that are not going to be there. So we're going to say app get. And we're going to install. And we were going to do a minus Y only because I don't want to have to say Y. And I'm going to say IP utils. Learn how to spell IP utils. And I'm going to say ping. Why am I doing this? Because by default, this doesn't come with ping. So if I wanted to go ahead and test ping to that IP address, I wouldn't be able to. But now I forgot. What is it? 1702, right? So ping 172.17.0.2. In theory, we should get a response. So now our WordPress server, uh, by default, without doing any firewalling or any, any you know tinkering, can ping our database uh, server. So we're going to say app get and I'm going to say install assuming I can spell and I'm going to say Maria DB and I'm going to say client. This is just something for me personally anytime I set up WordPress on my WordPress server I go ahead and install this. I'm pretty sure that it's a requirement even if it's not I do it anyway so that I have all of my database tools if I'm troubleshooting or something like that I have it. Essentially at this point we're done. The only thing we really need to do and we were 14 minutes into this video right and hopefully if this all works within the next like two minutes we're gonna have WordPress up and running if I stop talking so what I'm gonna do is now that I have my um, my MariaDB tools uh, installed let's go ahead and test our connection so I'll say 0 2 um, I'm gonna say you for user and I'm gonna type in the username and I'm gonna say minus P again nothing to do with containers this is just testing the actual app itself if I hit enter here it should ask me for a password and I'm connected to my database server, which again is a completely different container. 
We don't need to do anything here. I'm just going to say exit, and I'm going to go ahead and exit out of my container. So Docker, PS, boom, two different containers. Now, you'll notice here that the ports, okay, so my WordPress container, because I said, hey, I want it to run on port 8080, is essentially doing a NAT. So on my base workload server, it's able to essentially connect to um, port 8080, and it will forward that back into port 80 where my WordPress server is running on. And what I mean by that is right here, it's saying, look, any IP address that is bound on this server, I am going to listen on port 8080. And any traffic that comes in on port 8080, I'm going to go ahead and forward that to the back end container that's running on port 80. So that's essentially how this is configured. So I'm doing like automatic NAT, right? The thing is, is that I'm a little silly and I forgot what the IP address is. So I'm going to copy that right from... Um, right from AWS. By the way, don't try to get to it. It's it's only uh, it's only looking for, uh, it's only allowing access into my particular machine. We'll say 8080 and we'll hit enter. We'll see what happens. And there's our WordPress server. So now what we'll do is we'll run through this config. We'll say let's go. Uh, we need to give it the name of the database. So we're going to say WordPress. That's the name. Uh, the username was user. The password was password. The IP address was 172.17.0.2. And we want to have all of the tables uh, prefixed with WordPress. So all I've done again is is filled in the the uh, the options here. Let's say submit. It says yes. Are you ready to install? We're going to go ahead and say run the install uh, container site. Uh, username we'll just say admin. Uh, the password. Yeah, I'm going to copy this and just keep it in in WordPad in case we we need it. Notepad rather. Email address container at container.com. No one cares. And we'll say install WordPress. Now in theory, what's going to happen now? is that WordPress is going to be set up. We'll go ahead and say log in. We'll say admin and we'll pop in that password, log in, and boom, we have WordPress up and running in a containerized environment that's living in AWS. So again, 15, 16 minutes minus my, my blabbering and talking and things are super easy, right? So when you, when you set up containers, they are super, super simple. Now, if I wanted to, I could go and just power these off and delete them and that would be it. So if I come in here and I say Docker stop and I stop this one, and we'll say Docker stop and we'll say this one, Docker remove, and we'll again, just type in these same IDs, Docker remove, those containers are removed. And if we wanted to start over again, so again, if I wanted to go ahead and download and start over with the same container, I could do that, right? So I'll go ahead and run this and then say Docker PS. And now I have a brand new container up and running. So if I made a catastrophic mistake where I killed my database server and my testing and I just wanted to start over, like it's, it's literally that easy and it's that quick. I have the same exact database server up and running again. And all I need to do is go and start up my database. So this is why containers are so powerful, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry it went a little bit long. Enjoy the rest of your day.